Hi guys, welcome back to Foliage Loft. My name is Liam, and today I'm going to talk about five easy care trailing houseplants. So I do have five different options for you on my list, so I'll talk a little bit about each plant and why I think each one deserves a spot in your home. So number one on my list goes to the incredible Scandasis pictus. This plant is also known as the silver satin pothos or silver pothos. It's not actually a pothos, it's part of a different family, the Scandasis family. It does have some similarities to the pothos family of plants. So this plant is native to Southeast Asia, uh, mainly the Philippines, Bangladesh, and Malaysia. And uh, this plant was actually pretty hard to find during the lockdown for me. But I think the most interesting part of this plant is these uh, silver splotches on these leaves here. This variegation on the leaves is a really interesting iridescent quality. If the light hits it just the right way, these leaves will sparkle. So as you can see, this is a trailing plant. Um, it does kind of a, a, a zigzagging pattern on the way down. It remains quite dense and compact, which I really like. And uh, another interesting quality about this plant is that the leaves actually are quite fuzzy. Um, so, you know, if you're like allergic to cats or dogs, you could always get one of these guys instead. So in terms of care, this plant is pretty easy. Um, you gotta wait until the first two inches of the soil are dry before you water it. Uh, this plant does not want to be overwatered, And uh, this plant also prefers moderate humidity. Uh, so in my space, typically it's around 50% and this plant is doing just fine. And if you do have some really dry air, like under 20%, um, you will get some little brown spots on the leaves of this plant. This plant does want some bright indirect light. Um, I have mine in a south facing window for the winter. Uh, when the summer comes and we have a little bit more direct light, I'll probably move it over to a north facing window. Number two on my list is the string of dolphins. So I don't really have a large succulent collection by any means, um, but I do really like some of these trailing succulents that are available. So this plant is a unique hybrid of two other succulent plants. So yeah, I really enjoy how, especially near the crown of this plant, it kind of looks like little dolphins kind of leaping out of the water. It's uh, pretty unique and interesting. Now not every leaf on this plant is going to look exactly like a dolphin. You will have some deformed leaves, you know, some of them will be a little bit chubby, maybe look a little bit more like a whale than a dolphin. And I'm pretty sure that has something to do with the fact that this plant is a hybrid. Um, so it must be something within the genetics where not every single leaf is going to look perfectly like a dolphin. And this is considered a succulent, um, so obviously it's going to want a lot of light um, and it's perfect because it looks great hanging in a window. I would definitely recommend hanging this plant in a south facing window if you live in the northern hemisphere. And this plant also wants a well draining soil. It doesn't have to be quite as uh, sandy of a mix as some other succulents, um, but you definitely want a lot of perlite or pumice or some other kind of uh, well draining additive into your soil. So you might notice in some of these close up shots that I actually have quite a few dried up leaves on this plant. Um, I have underwatered it unfortunately, um, so some of these leaves are just completely dried up and I definitely have to clean it up a little bit. And I think I underwatered it because it's in such a small pot, um, so there's really not much soil here. Um, so obviously it's going to dry out quicker than a larger pot with more soil. But after watering it fully again, um, some of these leaves are really puffed back up and they're nice and full now. So I think we should be good. It's recovered pretty well. One problem with this plant, I find it's really susceptible to mealybugs. Uh, so every few months I'll find some mealybugs, you know, in these little nooks and crannies in the leaves. Um, so you'll take a Q-tip with some alcohol and uh, dab those off to clean it up. Um, if you do have a lot of mealybugs on here, you probably want to get like a little spray bottle and do the same mixture, alcohol, uh, water, and a little bit of dish soap and just spray down the plant completely and that should get rid of the mealybugs. And this plant does not need much fertilization, maybe once a year, maybe twice a year uh, in the growing season and that's it. So yeah, this is number two on my list, the string of dolphins. Next up at number three, we have burrow's tail or donkey's tail. So you might think this guy looks a little bit like a cactus almost. Um, but it is actually a perennial succulent. It has these trailing stems here with all these crazy looking protrusions. Um, it's definitely very alien looking, almost looks like a little Lovecraftian, like almost like tentacles reaching out. I think this is a great addition to any houseplant collection. Um, this one might be a little bit harder than some of the other plants on this list to take care of, but yeah, I'm pretty sure a beginner with the right knowledge could take care of this no problem. So hands down, the most important thing you need to know about this plant is that it really does not want to be overwatered. If you were to leave this plant sitting in water, um, it's almost like a guaranteed death sentence. So you want a really well draining soil for this guy. Um, you know, some kind of cactus mix with a lot of uh, sand or perlite in there. Um, you know, when you start to water it, really should see that water draining out of the bottom of the pot, like right away. And just like the string of dolphins I just talked about, uh, this plant will also kind of dry and pucker up 
uh, when it's ready to be watered, so it gives you a very uh, obvious signal. This plant also wants some bright direct sunlight. I really want to put it in the brightest spot in your home, right up in the window. So you might be able to see in some of these shots, the plant is actually covered in this waxy substance. Uh, it's a slightly different color than the leaf of the plant, and its purpose is to protect the plant from direct sunlight. Uh, this plant is native to Mexico, um, usually in the desert. So another thing you want to look out for with this plant is that these leaves are just so fragile and delicate. Um, the slightest bump <laughs> will uh, knock these leaves right off the stem. You can probably see on some of the closer shots all the little holes on the stem where the leaves once were and I've accidentally knocked them out. Um, so do be careful when you handle this plant. So that's number three, Boro's Tail. So sometimes plants are popular for a good reason and this one is no exception. Number four on my list is the Philodendron Scandens. So this plant is often referred to as the heartleaf philodendron. Um, it's obviously because of these heart-shaped leaves. But this plant is natively found in Central and South America. So I bought this plant at the tail end of last summer. Um, so I've had it for about six months. Um, when I bought it, it was just a little baby plant with just like a handful of leaves. And it's already grown, you know, several feet uh, throughout the fall and now into the winter. Um, so I'm looking forward to see how much this one will grow in the growing season. And I think this trailing plant uh, looks awesome on like a shelf or a bookshelf, um, on top of your fridge, something like that. Something where you can really appreciate its trailing qualities. And one of the great things about this plant is just it's really one of the most easy care plants that you could hope for. You definitely want to allow the top layer of soil to dry out. Um, you know, the top few inches will be fine, but sometimes I'll let this one almost completely dry out and it seems to handle it just fine. So it does want some fertilization, uh, especially in the growing season. So I'll give it a little bit of liquid organic fertilizer in the summer. And this plant also does really well in a wide variety of light levels. Uh, so it'll do just fine by a window in some bright indirect light. It'll grow pretty quickly. Um, if you move it further away from the windows, obviously it'll grow a little bit slower, but it will just survive and continue growing just fine. So this plant also does great in many different humidity situations as well. Um, so unlike most plants, this plant will actually tolerate some dry air. So that's number four, the Philodendron Scandens. And the final spot on my list of easy care trailing houseplants is the Tradescantia Nanook. So this is definitely one of those showstopper plants that can almost make some of the other plants seem a little bit plain. Um, you know, the contrast between the green and the pink on these leaves is amazing. So you may not think this is a trailing plant. This one is kind of growing a little bit upright, um, but as it matures and as it grows and these stems get longer, um, you know, gravity will do its job and, and these ones will start to come down. You can see this guy here starting to droop a little bit and eventually it's going to start trailing down. So this is quite an easy plant to take care of uh, with one major caveat. There's one major thing you have to watch out for. It's a very thirsty plant. So in the summer with my coco coir pumice soil mix that I like to use, I was watering these guys like every few days. Um, that's how thirsty they are. So if you're using like a peat-based potting mix, uh, your experience might be a little bit different. Um, in the winter, I'm only watering them about once every week and a half. Um, so it's not quite as thirsty in the winter. Um, but yeah, in the summer you really gotta watch out. If you let it dry out for too long, if you get some of these dry brown spots on the leaves, you can probably see a few little spots here. Um, but you can cut them back and recover just fine. But yeah, apart from that, it is pretty simple. Um, this plant does want to be fertilized in the summer, uh, like most tropical houseplants. And it definitely does want some bright indirect light. If it uh, doesn't get enough light, it's gonna start losing some of this color in the leaves. The pink will almost start to turn a little bit pale and sickly looking. Um, so you wanna make sure it's getting enough light to keep the irrigation. And this plant does have fairly thick leaves, um, so it does pretty well in low humidity as well. Um, but obviously you wanna keep it up you know, to 40-50% uh, to be optimal. And if you live somewhere um, warm and you want to have this plant outside, um, just be careful because it can be an invasive. Um, it grows very quickly, it can spread very rapidly, especially outdoors. Um, so do be careful if you're potting it outdoors. Um, but indoors, um, you have no problems. Um, I haven't had any pests um, on this plant at all, um, so they do seem quite resilient to pests, which is good. Yeah, overall, just an amazing plant, the Tradescantia Nanook. So there you have it, my five favorite trailing houseplants at the moment. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. See you later.